Allosaurus, also known as the Lion of the Jurassic period and one of the more popular dinosaurs of Pathotitans. And I don't blame you, it looks cool as heck. But how does this fierce creature fare in a battle? Let's find out. Hello there, my name is Adam Bokter and today I'm gonna show you how you can properly fight as an Allosaurus. We'll be going over the creature's arsenal, what type of fights you can fight in, and what you should do or can do to secure better chances for victory. Like many other creatures of the game, the Allosaurus will get new abilities in the future, but I will update when we'll have to cross that bridge. Also, a bit of a disclaimer, my time with the Allosaurus are pretty limited, so one of you more experienced Allo mains might not agree with what I'm about to say. Of course, if you do find something disagreeable, just comment your inputs, just don't be immature about it. Now then, let's go to the arsenal. We have the standard bite. Nothing too special about it, and even though we have a sense slot, we don't have any ability for it yet. A claw attack that causes bleed, a really important ability, and we got metabolism, not too re relevant. And for hide, we got three options. We have tough scout that increases armor by 25%, light well skills that increases speed but also decreases turning speed and armor, and resilient scales which increases bleed and venom healing by 30%. The leg slot have traction, which increases turning speed by 20% and decreases stamina recovery by 30. We have two tail abilities, one that is pretty much standard and causes knockback, and the other is balance, which increases 15% turning speed. As for calls, we don't have any of those fancy abilities yet. What subspecies you should grow depends on how you want to play. If you want to do a bit more brawling, then you should go for defense, but if you want to do hit and run, I would go speed. And if you find something in the middle, then I would just go for balanced. It is important that you use the right strategy and have the right abilities equipped for the right specific creature. Understand? You gotta adjust your abilities and strategy accordingly to what creature you are fighting. If you don't, then you won't be able to use your subspecies strength to full efficiency. If that was confusing, then basically what I just said uh, don't, for example, use a speed allo for head-to-head -head brawling, at least not against a creature that have the same or higher stats than you. Allosaurus aren't accepted from the standard 1v1, 1v2, or 1v pack, but if there's anything I found out as a, well, playing Allosaurus, playing as a solo Allosaurus, uh, kinda bad. Allosaurus, while big, you are technically just uh, one of the top tier of the middle class. And the games knows it too, which is why it supplemented you with the speed that the biggest fat asses of the game don't have. On a positive note though, on the white bar, which is the stamina bar, you can see it drains pretty slowly. Amongst the mid tiers, it's probably just beaten by the Pycno. Do note that the claw attack does drain stamina, the bite and tail doesn't. The stamina drain of the attack aren't too punishing, but it's definitely something you should keep your eye on during fights. As for the stamina regen, well... Yeah, it's pretty slow. So if you haven't put a lot of distance between you and your attackers or opponent, then they could easily come up to you and just attack you when you're trying to recover stam. Do keep a good distance because they can't track you, either by listening or the more difficult the method following your tracks, but it's not impossible. Fair enough talk about how Allosaurus sucks as a solo. Sometimes you might not even have the option, maybe you have an ugly broken jaw that even your mother hates and therefore you have to play solo. But not to worry, let's talk about what you should do if you have no other option. First off, we have one we wants. To quickly learn that most of the creatures that does fight you 1v1 are usually creature with more damage output than you. As such, hit and run is the best option you have. What type of hide you should equip during these situations are debatable, but I would sacrifice the tail ability just for extra mobility. I would also like to explain why I think hit and run is a better strategy than just face tanking. For that I had to emphasize location damage. Take a look.
I think the damage speaks uh, for itself when I say you shouldn't fight creature the same size or bigger than you. Of course, you don't have to pay any of this heed if you fight something smaller than you. In which case, I usually just take a defensive stance and let them run circles around me while I just time my attack. Even if you're faster than them, they have a bit more mobility than you, so... Wasting stamina like that just isn't worth it. Also, this isn't really an advice, but more of a warning. You may believe that you're fast, but you're not that fast. If your opponent know how to use the smart move button, then keeping up with your movement and predicting where you're going to end up, you'll definitely be in an unfavorable position. What's worse, if your opponent has a bone breaking ability and he lands that on you, then you'll have no other choice but to be forced into a head to hand combat, one that you'll most likely lose. Even though you don't have that bad of damage output, he most likely has better. If we're talking about creature of similar size, then I would be more open for a head-to-head -head combat. Sacrificing the abilities for speed to defense are always a good option if that's the case. Of course, don't be a dumb dumb and just receive all of their attacks with your body. Also, forgot to mention, I wouldn't really bother fighting semi-aquatics if you are close to river or lakes. Catching them off guard on land is basically somewhat a guaranteed win. If there are more than one attacker, then there aren't too much I can tell you except take a defensive stand and just try your best. Even creature bigger than you can fall to mid-tiers if there are enough of them. Of course, if you do plan to struggle to the very end, then just grab whatever you can, be it the environmental advantages, backing yourself into the wall, or do whatever you can to try and disrupt their teamwork. At best, they might even hit each other. And that can give you the chance to either slip away or even kill them. When it comes to what terrain you should try and aim to fight on, then it depends on the situation. Like you just saw, if you are attacked by multiple adversaries, then you should aim for something with a bit more vegetation. The vegetation might get them to hesitate a bit more, and even consider that it is too big of a risk. If we talk about elevation in the terrain, then I would say a flat terrain would suit the aloe best. We don't really have any real knockback abilities, and even if it says that the tail does knockback ability, the knockback uh, kinda sucks, so it's not something you should go for, but hey, you do you. As for the aloe hitboxes, then it's a pretty all-rounder, you just need to move accordingly to your opponent or opponents. So to summarize what I set up to now, if you fight 1v1 with a high stat opponent, then I would use the tough scouts or resilient scales and do hits and run. I would sacrifice the tail attack for a bit of better mobility, but that's my choice. If you want to keep the tail attack, then you do you. If you fight multiple adversaries, then just find anything that can boost your chance for survival and put up a good struggle. After all, a beast is more dangerous if it feels cornered. If you fight a creature of similar stats, then you can do a head-to-head -head brawl. However, it's a bit of a gamble, so I don't particularly recommend it. Also, if you do plan on doing that, then it is best suited for defense allo with defense stats. I made these combat guide videos with in mind that you're going to play solo, and I prefer it that way because if I cover what you're going to do as if you're in a group, then I feel like your individual skill doesn't matter as much if you're as if you're going to play solo. You can't really expand your talent if you have people to cover up for what you lack. What I'm trying to say is, what I want to accomplish with these videos is to boost your individual skill, not your skill as a group. So unfortunately, I will not give any advice on what you can do as a group. If I do, I feel like these videos will lose their purpose. That being said, the Allosaurus can never be a true apex. Sure, if you play smart you might be able to dominate the mid-tiers or creatures smaller than you, but against apexes, 
the odds of winning will always favor the larger animals. I'm not saying it's impossible to defeat an Apex in a 1v1, but I say the likelihood of you achieving that are pretty slim. You at least need to be up against a rather inexperienced player to do that. I did prefer the Allosaurus as a lion in the beginning, and lion hunts in pack? So to give a little hint for what you can do, take what I have taught you in this video and just apply it for teamwork. And with that being said, I will see you guys later.